Good morning, students. Myself Kamalnath. I welcome you all in the class of English. Students, this is the second video, and we have already started chapter eleven, the little square box, and this is the second part of the story. In the first part, that was the beginning part of the story. I had introduced you. Sherlock Holmes, even here yeah, the writer of this story, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and I told you what kind and what qualities of writer he is. He is describing here a very suspicious activities of two people who have come on the deck of the ship and they are carrying a square box. what is in the box what are they doing and what leads to their activities this is what we are going to learn in this part second part middle part and there will be again one more part of the story third part in which i will conclude the story so in the second part let us see what happens as i told you the writer the speaker who is the narrator himself was very suspicious very doubtful when he heard the conversation of the two strange people two strange persons who came on the ship and they were talking they were whispering that they had something to do and they were hiding themselves from the view of other people so it is very doubtful very suspicious let us see from this part from the first moment here the speaker tells you from the very first moment first moment of their conversation i had felt a horrible sense of misgiving he was quite filled of panic fear he was doubtful and even fearful as well from the very beginning of the conversation he heard from the two people it seemed more than confirmed as i uh, gazed at what lay before me i was a little it was a little square box made of some dark wood it reminded me of a pistol case it was looking like a pistol case only it was much higher than a pistol case that was only the difference there was a trigger like arrangement upon the lid lid that was a cover of the box so there was a trigger like arrangement fixed on the lid to which a coil of a string was attached beside this trigger there was a, a small square opening through the wood the tall man whose name was flanigan as his companion called him this name peered in for several minutes with an expression of intense anxiety upon his face why he was looking so we will come to know here later so he told after that it seems right enough he said at last i tried to shake it said his companion such delicate things need delicate treatment put it some of the needful mula flanagan told his friend his companion muller to put the necessary things in the box the sorter man looked in his pocket he searched something in his pocket for some time and then produced a small paper pocket he took out a packet he opened this and took out half of handful of wheatish grains there were some wheatish grains in his hand now which he took out from that packet which he poured down through the hole of that box a curious clicking noise followed when he put that grain which is grain into the box through that square opening uh, he could hear he could listen clicking noise that was followed from the inside of the box and both the man mm, smiled in a very yeah, satisfied way that they were satisfied what they had done look out here is someone coming said 
said Flanagan. Take it down. Huh? Our birth. Take it down to our birth. We won't need it until tonight. And it will be safe there as well. It would not do uh, to have anyone suspecting what our game is. Or worse still. Ha <clears throat> then uh, the, they will be hum fumbling with the box and letting it off uh, by mistake. There will be no problem even the passengers mishandle it. There is no problem. Okay, nothing will happen. He told. And the two men laughed with a cold, harsh laugh before uh, bearing the mysterious little box away with them. How long I remained sitting on that coil of rope, I shall never know. I tried to recall the words which had been spoken in the terrible dialogue I had overheard. I uh, could uh, these fake facts uh, could these facts lead to any other conclusion? He was doubtful. His mind was quite doubtful. He was not able to reach to any conclusion what the people, what the two persons were going to do. What they had in the, uh, kept in the box. Had they any very terrible plan to damage the ship, destroy the ship, kill the people or many more. It was clear to me that they were the disparate agents of some group. They were disparate agents. They were hopeless here, yeah, people and agents of some group who intended to sacrifice even themselves, their fellow passengers and even the ship in one great explosion. As I told you, the speaker was in such a confusion. He was in this dot only that these people, these two persons, the uh, uh, people who had brought the box only, they had some explosion and they were going to uh, destroy the ship. They were disparate agents, as he told. So what happened next? Let us see. The Whittish grains, which I had seen, one of them poured into the box, no doubt, formed a uh, fuse for exploding it. He thought so. He thought. It is just his uh, dot only. It is just the speculation of the speaker. What is going to happen? We shall see. We will uh, just witness what, what is going to happen. I had heard a sound come from the box which might have been emitted by some delicate piece of machinery. But what did they mean by tonight? He had heard their dialogues, their conversation. What did they mean by tonight? Could it be that they were putting their horrible design into action on the very first evening of uh, our voyage? He was doubtful that these people are going to damage the ship uh, in the very first evening only. The mayor thought of it sent a cold shudder over me. And the speaker is telling when this idea came to me that they had some, something very bad to do. He was filled with extreme fear, with extreme uh, panic. During dinner, a world of conflicting ideas was battling in my mind. When he was taking dinner, several kinds of ideas were conflicting in his mind. What was I to do? He was not in a position what he should do, what a step he should take. Because he had only watched he had only seen those people doing so. Should I accuse them before both passengers and captain? He thought, should he go to the uh, passengers, his co-passengers? Should he tell everything, what he had heard, what he had seen? Or should he go to the captain and tell the same thing? Should I demand a few minutes conversation with the latter in the cabin and reveal it? all. Or he thought that should he watch, should he wait some more and see what the next action, next action is going to be of these people. For an instant, I was half determined to do it. But the thought, uh, it, be, it becoming mm, too, com uh, 
conspirators was hateful to me might it not be possible that i was i was mistaken he thought that might be that he was mistaken and he was only here dotting those people here unnecessarily so he just waited no i would uh, procrastinate i would keep my eye on the two men and follow and follow them at every turn he decided that he would not do so he would wait wait and he would watch what the next plan they are going to do what is what was their next action going to be so let us see here what is their next i saw the villains he is calling now villains to them i saw the villains heading to the deck after dinner and followed them he saw that they were going towards the uh, deck he also followed them i quickly hid myself in one of the live boats that was hung over the deck a uh, live boat you know very well what is the live boat when the ship is in danger and it is about to sink only the live boats are here to save the life of the passengers in the ship so he hid himself uh, in one of the live boats that was hung over the deck in it i could reconsider my course of action he thought so and by raising head i could get a view of the two men he raised his head and he could see the two people what they were doing it was so dark that i could hardly make out uh, their figures he hardly could see them a few of the passengers were scattered about the deck but many had gone below a strange stillness seemed to pervade the air that was what a kind of fear a kind of uh, suspicion that was prevailing all around we were to let off at 10 where we know said a voice from right below my boat one of uh, the two said to other we were to let off at 10 where we not means they had to set and they had to do something at 10 what they are going to do we will come to know students yes at 10 sharp we have 8 minutes yet they had 8 minutes left and at 10 they are, they are they were going to do something to that box they will hear the drop of the trigger won't they it doesn't matter it will be too late for anyone to prevent its uh, going off and so that to other told matters little even if they listen even if they listen that trigger sound only nothing will happen because we will have given the accent uh, to our plan there was a pause here then both of them stopped took a halt then i heard muller's voice in a ghastly whisper there is only 5 minutes more he told they had only left 5 minutes and it was no doubt so harsh noise so this was what this part that was the middle part and some more that i will just add here in online class so this was what for today's video and i am sure that the part i have explained you of the story you must have understood what these two people are doing here that is quite here a secret we will come to know in the last part and the third part of this story everything what these two people had planned what they were doing why they had come and how much the dot of the speaker was correct to what extent he was right in thinking so we will come to know in the next part of the story thank you student thank you being with me thank you